Okay, so as we're playing with different features, uh, note you can go between any of them, especially the eyes, the mouths, the, the accessories, and whichever one you turn off and turn back on will, will show up on top. So I want the idea of kind of a menacing skull with skull shape with um, kind of angry eyes, maybe taking sadistic pleasure in what they're witnessing. And I want to get a sense of like the, the red and blue lights going on around like an active crime scene. I'd like to have some sort of symbol of authority. There's no kind of cop hat or anything. There is this cowboy hat, which is kind of like the, the Texas Highway Patrol but or State Patrol. But maybe if I can kind of combine these in certain ways and then put the other things on top. This just gets us started. And you can keep it nice and clean and simple as well. But this just is the beginning of what we're doing. So we're, we're playing different ideas through. Oh, I kind of like this one. There we go. Like weeping a false tear. I don't know. It kind of works. Maybe I'll put this behind everything. And then you can go back to others and kind of layer them. So take that, kind of layer that up, that helps. Put this back on top. It's a little chaotic, but I think it will work. Okay, so once you have something, that you think will inspire you. We can definitely modify from there. So I want to see if I want to add any other kind of eye features on top of everything. Then we're going to save it. <laughs> that's freaky we're going to save it as I believe it's a PNG so you'll see up at the top it says export so you just have something go ahead and export it and download the PNG SVG is a vector format so we're not dealing with those yet Shows you some of the things you can do with it, right? As a PNG, because it's transparent, it can be a sticker. It can go onto products. And then just as a backup, we're going to make it as big as you can on your screen. And just do a screen grab of it, just in case. And then under Downloads, you'll see the PNG. I'm going to organize that into my exercise two folder. And then I can also, let's keep both, um, also do that with my screenshot. And I had made one earlier as well. You know, before my computer shut down, it was this. That's kind of simpler. This is a little bit more complicated. 
think I'll work with this simpler one. So whatever you work with, you know, make it as a PNG. Okay. Then you can close Emoji Maker. And we're going to do the next step, which is to bring it into a new photo P file. Sorry for all the scrolling. Okay, so we're going to say, we're going to open photo P. We're going to say file open in place. So we can open from computer. Open my exercise two folder. Pick the one I want to use, that PNG, open it. There it is. And now this is what's interesting. No matter what the, the resolution size is, remember how when we did our composite, we had to make it eight by 10 inches by, by 150 pixels per inch. Here, if I go to image image size, I can see that this is only 72 pixels per inch at only 320 pixels. So it's only like four and a half inches. So it's pretty small. It's, it's I think the size that emojis are designed at. But when you're doing vectors, and we're only going to build this with vector shapes, it doesn't actually matter how many pixels you have, because vectors are not pixel based. So we're going to keep it at its regular resolution, but I am going to grow more space around it. So I have room to work. So I'm going to say image canvas size. And if it starts at 320 pixels, and if all of you are using the PNGs downloaded from the Emoji Maker, they're all going to be the same. And I'm going to go ahead and make it 500 in both dimensions. Makes sense just to work in pixel dimensions instead of inches right now. That gives me plenty of space to work. Okay, now I'm going to start using shape tool options, which are at the bottom, right above the hand of your Photo P tools right here. I'll make my tools a little bit bigger for you to see. Just by clicking on the browser itself. Ah, and zooming in or out. There we go. I can make the tools bigger or smaller that way. And when I click on my actual image and I zoom in, I can zoom in and out. Okay. So you see under layers, I have just a background layer. When I use the shape tool, I don't have to create a new layer. It will automatically do it. I'm going to start with kind of the biggest, most basic shape, which is going to be opening up the drawer of the tools and choosing the ellipse. And it's going to be kind of a big round shape. So I'm going to hold down shift to make it a perfect circle. and then just drag and drop it. It will automatically fill in with, with red, but see that that's what's called a shape tool or a, a shape layer. And a lot like our smart layers, you can't erase from it or edit it without rasterizing it first. We don't wanna ever rasterize these. We wanna keep them as pure vector layers. You'll also see that it has kind of a, a blue ridge around it, which isn't really there. That's just to show the vector that's creating the shape. Now, just like compositing tools, though, I can uh, transform it and keep it as a shape tool. So I can go to Edit, Free Transform, right click within the Free Transform, and then use my favorite Free Transform tool, which is Warp. And I can tug it at these different anchors and change what was a perfect circle into this more kind of oblong shape that's like the base of the skull, just using the warp tool. But then I hit return. And then how do I change the color so that it's the light gray? Because I'm just trying to match, at least at the beginning, the emoji that I designed. I double click within the layer preview window on this little 
um, icon, I double click and it will give me a color picker. And I can choose from my swatches, I can choose from the color slider and pick one. Or whenever you have the color picker, if you slide off of that into a photo P file, this is the exact same as Photoshop, I can actually click and it will automatically pick the color that I click on. So I might as well start with the, the correct color and then I say OK. Now I'm going to make a new shape just by clicking on the shape tool again. This time I will use the custom shape tool. And then custom shapes will load from a library of a bunch of different vector shapes. Right. Lots and lots. And what do I want to use? Well, let's see if there's something that will work for the teeth. I could use the exclamation point, but just rotate them. I could use the bell and then just cut off the little tip of it. I could use the spoon. Let's see. It's just like cutouts of paper. Oh, I'm going to use the microphone. Okay, so now I make that shape. And then I can use Edit trans Free Transform. Shortcut for that is Command or is Control T, always Control T, even on a Mac, because this is browser based. And I can set that in. The problem is it has this extra little bit to it, right? And if because a vector, everything is contained in that one shape. So if I control T and transform it and then trying to warp it away, like just tug at the corner here, I can get that out of frame. But I can't actually delete any of that without rasterizing it. And I don't want you to rasterize anything. I want everything to stay as a shape layer. So, so far, this is what I have. I have these two shapes layered on top of each other. And again, it's an exercise. It doesn't need to be perfect. But now that I've done that, I can duplicate that shape. How do we duplicate? We do Command J on a Mac, Control J on a PC. And then I can use my Move tool and move that duplicate over. And you want to build from the back forward. And then I'm going to do Control T, and I'm going to warp it by right-clicking inside and then tugging at this corner to make that curve match symmetrically with the other one. So you can modify vectors, but you can't erase them or cut away from them. You have to take the shape as is. And we're we're not going to cut out with white shapes, right? Notice we want to keep the free floating background, the checkerboard background. And now I'm going to make another duplicate of this one, make it symmetrical. Digital is really good at perfect copies. So if I hit Control T, right click within, I can flip it horizontally and then move it to this side. So what we're going for is something that looks like an emoji, but all out of vector shapes. Because they're vector shapes, right now they might seem soft in their pixels because they're still being viewed through a pixel program, but we can change it to any scale we want and it will be perfectly clean because vectors do not rely on pixels.